Okay, back to it for the Unconquered film session. Covering the second half of the Florida State Clemson game. First of all, FSU did a great job uh, just getting the most out of the out of that half they could. Uh, only coming in uh, to this half being down three after the way they played in the first half was critical to being able to get this win. So you can see first play, what they're doing. It's pretty simple. All they're trying to do, they're trying to motion everybody into the box here. They know that on first and 10, Clemson is doing everything they can to load that box to stop the running game. And they believe that they can get those corners and man coverage and get, get wins. Florida State is happy to give them that, that box because what they want is exactly that matchup. They're trying to get this post, and then they're going to have a wheel concept behind it. So the basic idea is if the player responsible for the wheel is going to step down hard against the play action, then... You know, basically, you get to right here. If he's even, he's leaving. Otherwise, you're going to get a nice post concept. From the short side, what's going to happen is normally you're going to get the, the safety is going to turn his back a little bit and kind of get toward the middle of the field. That's going to mean that if that something skinny here, it's going to be outside leverage from the uh, from the corner. You're going to have a chance there. And, uh, and otherwise, you've got, you know, your one-on-one -on -one here, which you're going to feel pretty good about anyway. But you can see Johnny runs away. If that's... Put out in front of him a little bit better. If that's a little bit better throw, that, that could have potentially scored. But it's basic stuff here. And he just runs by him. It's basically an inside vertical. Just kind of throw throw it away to throw it throw it down the field. Alright, so you're gonna take that. Now you're gonna go two by two. The whole goal here is you're gonna force the defense to declare what they want to do. So you're trying to get this guy to determine whether he wants to play closer to the receivers. You're trying to let this guy determine whether he wants to play up in here. You're, you're basically forcing the defense to, to tip its hand. First and 10 here, they're going this time with a light box. And so this should be an easy run call generally. But in this case, they're going to go with a screen. Interesting thing here, you've got Hakeem Williams getting some early time here against Clemson, crunch time. Misses that block. I actually don't like this read. I, I would prefer against this look for this to be a run, to, to be a handoff. It's five on, it's five man box. You've got Carter down here. I, I just think this two on two, I, I, I know you like it. That should be, that should be fine. You get, you get a block here. You've got some space. This is, this is a defensible call. So I take that back. All right. So here you got outside zone once again. And this is just so good from Clemson. This is, honestly, this Clemson defense is as good as I think Florida State's going to play all season, maybe even into the playoff. This is a really good Clemson defense. Better than I thought they'd be, just based on earlier stuff here. So... Let's look at what we've got here. It's not bad on the front side. Honestly, the the issue here is the is the back. The back is not making the making the cut where he should. So what you're doing in terms of aiming point is you're trying to work your way on the outside, but on these stretch runs, what you're what you're expecting is that to cut back somewhere and you're looking for that cutback and he's just late on that cutback. So essentially what he should be seeing here, you've got the double team here, and that's going to work up to the backer. Because the backside guard gets such a quick turn on the defensive tackle, and then your H actually doesn't work his way all the way across but fits here, this is where the ball should right now as he's coming outside. He should be looking at where the butts are on that. You get the butt there. You get your H. You should follow, but he should follow through that hole. If he does that here, if he hits that, there's a real chance this hits. And I just think he's missing his missing his his break point here. He's he's trying to hit it here, and really that should have been hit one gap back. If he bends this back here, I think this has got a chance to really hit. It's really close. Moving forward here, so that's just the back missing his spot. And by the way, Clemson's backer here, Trotter, 
you see how much force he lands with on the combo block. He recognizes this, and even if he does bend this back, there's a chance that Trotter actually makes this tackle because of hitting Smith so hard and, and sort of turning him there. All right, so, yeah, here you've got that third and seven. And all they're trying to do here is get their get the man matchups that you have here. But Clemson actually is dropping. This is this is a straight zone. And they do a great job playing inside out. They're that's a good defense. Tip your cap. Fourth and one. This is a really nice design here. Only issue is you gotta have him on the line of scrimmage. So this is the one that they uh that they called too many men in the backfield on illegal formation and this is a nice concept i mean it's fourth and one what they're trying to do here is pretty simple trying to get an rpo situation for for travis where it's either run pass and then on the front side or on the coming from the back side you got the deeper one deeper cross coming across and you kind of expect this one to hit but they're so good at linebacker and safety that they take that stuff away right away. So you got nothing there. It's going to have to come to the secondary guy. And that's a heck of a throw, by the way. Nice throw, nice catch. Keon Coleman. But it's pretty straightforward that you just got to have an end man on the line of scrimmage up here. And they don't. So nice job by Fitz. Tell you what, he's really turned things around. You got to give him a lot of credit for turning things around from compared to last year, since he's fixed his steps. So first drive of the second half. One thing that we talked about in the last video, Florida State played a ton of, of cover seven in the first half. Just sat in cover seven, probably what eighty percent of the time. I would say eight out of ten snaps they were on. They were in cover seven. Not doing that so much in the second half. And you'll see here they're going with a buck blitz to the to the boundary right away and that's going to put you in straight man on this side of the field you see the inside leverage right here inside leverage right here these guys are going straight man and then you've got a mixed coverage on this so it's a it's a combo coverage here man to the, man to the boundary and then you're going to have what is essentially a quarters look to the to the field and you know that's that's a really good play by both by by both sides. I mean, this is this is excellent coverage from Green. He's got his hand in there. Actually, touches the football. Hands up. Hands need to stay up just a little bit longer there for the rusher for Brown. The thing you got to give Green credit on here is a lot of guys here. They get their hand in there. Receiver ends up catching it, and then it turns into a big play. He still finishes and makes the tackle, even though that isn't that isn't a breakup. So this is this is a nice one here. Nice nice job on concept that we saw Clemson run a bunch in the first half. So they're going to run vertical here and run the little snag here and then get that. So just base yeah, this is just basic snag. So they ran this some in the first half and Florida State handled it well here. first half one of the things that they struggled with is this here they ended up allowing that to happen because they were chasing too far with this he's got to let that vertical go and start looking for number for the for the interior breaking route and then he gets over the top here this is really nice there's nowhere to go and good compression of the pocket by the uh, defensive tackles farmer gets a helmet sticker for me Actually, game ball for me with the way he played in this game. Farmer was a was a beast. Second twelve, and once again, Farmer does his job on the interior as does Lovett. But where this play's really blown up is right here. Watch the hands from the violent hands from Jared Verse. That right there, that guy made himself some money in this game. Didn't have a didn't have a sack, but boy, he did some damage in the running game. So, didn't see any of this in the first half. They are in straight man, zero coverage across the board. And they are bringing the house. And they're, they're letting you know, you better get it off. 
This should have been a sack. So this is where he's coming at this angle. He needs to come at this angle. If he comes at this angle, then basically what you're trying to do, especially against a right-handed quarterback, you need to come at the throwing shoulder side, the deeper shoulder side here, so that he essentially has to step up into this situation, and then you can just kind of finish. You don't get deeper than than his than his back shoulder, but you want to run right at that back shoulder so that he can't just flank you. You want him to... You want to force him to one side or to step this way so that you can just chase and finish. And in, in this case, he comes to flat, allows this to happen out here. And that very nearly becomes a pick. Jerry and Jones does a great job of jumping that. He's in position. Probably should have intercepted it, actually, but did a great job of getting on that. And you can see right here, he throws it and he's like, oh! Oh, <laughs> wanted that back as soon as he threw it. I'd really like to see someone else at, on punt return just because it scares me to have your, your best offensive player back there. But, you know, it's okay. So counter here. And Clemson just does such a good job here. First of all, the violence of their backers really makes a difference. I mean, they, they don't just arrive. They're taken on the block here. And you see, this is against Byers. Byers is, is stumbling here. First of all, the, the edge here spills this so well that he spills it into the tackle, who then trips over it. And this is all stacked up. People watching this live were like, what is, the, what is he doing? What is Hill doing? Well, he's supposed to stay on the butt of his blockers and then cut off of that. Well, when one blocker falls down, starts to take the other one down, you don't really have much. He's doing his job here. It's just a disaster in front of him. Now, if you want to know why Jordan Travis is not keeping more on this, they've got N man on the line of scrimmage who is giving him a give read. This is Muddy, but he's not chasing hard. So Muddy Reed is a give read. And they've got a backside defender who's responsible for the quarterback as well. So they know this. This is a give read all the way. They are forcing the give and just bringing the plus one from the backside, which allows them to attack on the front side, which means really you just have to win out here. You're going to end up having to win out here if that's what they're doing. And sometimes you just have to tell your quarterback to keep or do some things to get him on the edge if, if, you, if you want his legs to do what they, what they do. So outside zone here. And Byers just gets beat to the spot here. Outside zone, he's got to step out. And what you want is you want him to kind of get his head on the outside of this defensive end and then the defensive end to just kind of ride down the line of scrimmage or to get him hooked. And then you can kind of turn that into a play out here. But instead, the tackles did, or the, their ends did such a great job of setting the edge with physicality here and turning everything back in. So this turns a stretch play into you got to start turning this back in now. And then out of that, you wind up having backers on the backside here. Carter, to me, this game was so impressive. Right in the spot. You know, at best, you're trying to hit right here with speed. But again, the backside edge fights over the top, forces you to the backside backer, and there's nothing there. And if you're looking at Jordan Travis's read on this, this is a read play. This is this is a give read all the way. What are you going to ask him to beat Barrett uh, to beat uh, Barrett Carter to the outside here when he's just watching you? And that's a give read. And then he comes in and cleans up. They, they do a really, really. They're really good defensively. Those backers are excellent. Third and eleven. Going to go. I, I don't have any problem with this decision. You got your one-on-one, -on -one, especially with a with a flag down. Take your freebie. You hope that you make this play. It's just not a great throw and catch. And Wiggins, Wiggins earned some money in this game. He he was really impressive to me. I think that pair of corners is probably the best you'll play all all, all season. 
So this is this is just getting whipped on the outside, and this is bad technique here from from buyers. So if you watch his set, instead of what you want is kick that leg back and then kick it back again. It should be a shuffle where that leg stays back and your shoulders stay square the whole way. So it should be shuffle, shuffle. This is closer to what you want from Bless Harris here. Shuffle, shuffle. He's still not in the best position here. But this right here, what you can't have is clicking your feet together. Now you have no leverage. And then as soon as the shoulders turn to the sideline, the tackle's basically beat. Because now you've got a soft inside shoulder is what the defensive lineman will call it. It's the soft shoulder. So you can press to the field and then knife in and that shoulder is going to be soft because you can't post on it. And then the other thing is, if you compare trying to get around this right there, the shoulder pad's there, if you're trying to get around that, that's the angle you have to take, right? You're going to have to do that. If you're trying to get around that, that's the angle you take. So that shortens the angle for the defensive lineman as soon as you open your shoulders like that. He's got to stay in his in his pass set and trust his feet longer and stay vertical and get a little more depth on that pass set against these speed rushers. But he struggled with this all, all second half in particular. And that's why Jordan is having to make this throw under duress. And they're trying to set this up to get a nice one-on-one -on -one against the against the backer. That's not the backer you're going to manage to win that against very often. So, but yeah, Xavier Thomas beat Byers like a drum in the second half. They're going to have to find another solution on the outside, I think, for when that that happens. They may have found it at the end of the at the end of the game here with uh, with Washington. So I think this is still cover seven here. Looks like it to me. They're just kind of matching across with the uh, with the star. Got to make that tackle. Make that tackle at the line of scrimmage, and you got no problems. But you know they're on scholarship too. Inside zone, just got a really good aggressive inside zone runner, and I think. Briggs, the one place he's played really well this year, I did think against some of the inside run stuff, he was a little on the weaker side in this game. This was not his strongest game against that. Did a lot of other things well and has done other things well on the season, but I did think there were times where he was he was among the weaker guys on the front against inside run stuff. So I think there's a hold here. I think you got to call that right there because he's pulling on him. I think you got to call that. But Klubnik, got to give him credit. The guy can really run. I think you call that. This was lucky. Because they're this is a little trick play. They're running a tight end leak here, and it's a basically the whole design here. And they they drew Florida State in a in a buck blitz. So they're bringing the blitz. And that means it's man across the board. You see the inside leverage here. So he's gonna have back to the back to the uh to the quarterback. He's in man, that's back to the quarterback. And the whole goal is to try to get over pursuit here, make it look like he's blocking, get him to chase. See, there's your man-to-man -man right there. He's he's man-to-man -man with the tight end. You get him to overrun, all of a sudden there's a slip, and that's an oh shoot. But this is why getting pressure is so important, and this is where Farmer once again earns his helmet sticker, his game ball for the day. Brown also gets his hands up. That ball's completed. You look at the at the backside here. He's running for a long time. That might have scored. Farmer had a really good sequence here. Look at this push-pull here. So push, pull. Woo! -hoo 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 -hoo. And that's really nice from, from Deloach. Yeah, you're in cover seven there. So if you want to know, generally speaking, for Florida State, if you're gonna, if, if how do, how can you tell what what coverage they're in? There are a couple things that you can look at. One is you can hear a lot of people talk about Fuller playing safe and playing a cover two shell or whatever. They're not playing cover two. They're playing cover seven, which is a quarters base coverage. If you see two safeties and one of them does not immediately rotate down at the snap, then they're going to be in a cover two or a cover four. They're in cover seven seventy percent of the time or so. 
the other way that you, so the way you can tell whether it's cover two or cover seven, watch what happens with the corners. If the corners are playing hard, so if he stays put and just tries to get his hands on and redirect and sort of turns his shoulders a little bit this way and then stays in the flat, now you know you've got a true cover two. If he's doing the same thing, same thing, cover two. If you see these guys turning and taking off up the field with the receiver they're covering, you know it's quarters. Because that means you've got deep quarter, deep quarter, deep quarter, deep quarter responsibility. And you know, okay, so how do you know whether it's quarters or man? Well, in true man or man free, first of all, you're going to see a rotation generally to a single safety. Second of all, so there's the old old saying that corners lie, safety sell the, tell the truth. But uh, the other thing is that man to man, as a rule, plays inside leverage so that you don't give anything to the inside. Zone stuff where you're matching, you're usually funneling. So you're going to play quarters usually with outside leverage on the corners, though you can play a version of quarters with inside leverage. And in some cases, I actually prefer that particular approach. Uh, I think Florida State would benefit from doing that at times, though that does leave you vulnerable sometimes to more pick and rub type stuff. The reason you like playing outside in is that you can read what the number two is doing. So you, you know, you're playing outside leverage here against a tray formation because he's reading through number one to number two to see, okay, so he, he comes inside, you're going to pick up the, the vertical from wherever he's coming from. So that's, that's the way you, you understand this. So they're in, they're in a cover seven here. It means you're going to have vertical. Hey, so he's going to have the, uh, the flat and then if the flat turns into a wheel, he carries the wheel, and then you've got the hook to num you know handle number three. So if you put two guys into the flat, and number three goes into the flat, this is really nice. Bethune's become a really good player. He's been a really good player. All right. So once again, you have a buck blitz, and that's going to put you in straight man. Well, man free. But you see the difference? Inside leverage here. Inside leverage here. This should be inside leverage here as well. This is a bust from this side of the field. If they're, if they're playing some sort of quarters type thing to the field and trying to play inside leverage, I think that's a mistake. I, I, I just think something went wrong here. Because this should be inside leverage. You cannot let the free access happen here. When you've got someone who's responsible for the back there, that just, you cannot let that happen. It's an interesting look here with, uh, with Peyton here as a add on rusher from the mic spot. But if you're going to play inside leverage here, you've got to have a rat to funnel to. If not, if he's actually responsible for the back, which I'm pretty sure, yeah, he is, because he's got here, he's rushing, and he's got to have the back, then that means you have to be inside leverage here. This is a mistake from both guys on this side of the field. And that's just easy access. You just cannot play that kind of football. So if you look at this, play inside, force him to squirt release, so if he's going to get the get the slant, force him to work you out here and then work across you. Try Don't let him cross your face, and that's going to be very difficult. But this is one of the easiest throws in football, and you just cannot do that. So here you got quads, and all they're trying to do here, they're trying to, to get the light box five on five by getting these guys out. You're going to have to get four over four. And they know FSU is not going to want to get that safety out out of there. So, if if I'm Florida State, I'm I'm okay with this being one on one. Make that a, a single single coverage, and bring this guy down as the extra plus one. He has to do it right away. I'd like to see him get down there faster. 
because they're in quarters here. Your plus one has to be fast here. And I do like that they're playing uh, they're, that they're playing inside leverage here. That allows you to, to be able to be aggressive with your safety here. This is a good play by Malcolm Ray. Sheds turns this into a what three and a half yard gain instead of a uh, instead of a shorter gain. It's a nice play. Okay, so now they're in ponies. And that 21 personnel. And again, this is just Jared Verse and the defensive tackles taking care of business. Although that this was just unfortunate dumb luck in certain cases for FSU. I mean, love it with the ill-timed face mask there. 15-yard penalty. And they just kept getting these. This is very similar, actually, to what Florida State got them with on the Keon Coleman play. They've, they're setting this up based on the screen action here, and you can even see he flashing his hands. They're trying to get the attention here because this is just a stalk, stalk, slip. So screen slip to the tight end instead of to the uh, receiver. It's actually not horrible by the backer. That's Omar, Omar Graham there. It's not terrible. Could have recognized it a little faster. I'm not sure that any of the veterans would have done a whole lot better there. But I think safety has safety's planned too deep here, for one. So there's not much reason to be standing in the end zone here. Recognize where you are, get your feet on the goal line, and then break on this. Don't get too deep in the end zone. I, I safety's just got to break on that a lot faster. So notice here they did they made the correction from earlier in the game. Now they're in a in a bare look. They're going to cover all those interior players against a uh, under center situation, and that's why they don't give up the touchdown this time. So you know they gave up a little push, but it's not bad. And here they're in position. I'm fine with leaving the center uncovered in the shotgun because that allows you to do some of these things and allows your backers to, to, uh, to get there. This very nearly, they very nearly get to the, to him in time to keep him out. But Shipley's a really good short yardage runner. And that's that. All right. Moving forward. We're not interested in Oregon, Colorado. So here they know that, that Clemson's been, keeping this guy hanging out on the backside. They still want to get Travis some opportunities on the edge. And so now they're starting to get creative. They're going to do this with play action to get the back out there. The hope is that the backers here are going to flow with that. And the backer is going to be responsible for your back here. He's going to have to take the quarterback and you're going to get the backer way behind as he's having to chase and you see what they're doing here is they're going to slip Byers out. And if Byers gets anything close to a piece of Trotter here, if he gets the backer here at all, this scores. Or at least gets a big play. But Trotter is really good, does a great job of running under that and making Byers whiff. Byers just has to get on him faster. Get your eyes to him, turn around. Get your feet moving. Oh, it's so close. Get him out there. And if he gets this with with a head of steam, and Travis needs to throw him out there a little further. If Travis throws this ball out there a little further and lets him run through it, it doesn't really matter because he's just outrunning everybody. And this is going to be at minimum a 10-yard gain, if not a score. He still m makes a play of it just because he's he finds ways to break tackles in the open field. That's just what he does. This is pretty poor from Travis here. Now, they get called for uh, for illegal formation because either Johnny or Keon has to be on the line here. Uh, not sure which one it's supposed to be on this. I'd need to look at their at their uh, at the sheet. Uh, but my guess is it's probably got to be Johnny. But what they're trying to set up here, they they're going unbalanced to get a nice protection look here. So 
you know, essentially you're getting extra protection on the edge here, getting extra protection here. And this is all designed to set up this shot play right here. You've got no additional defensive back on the, on that side. So you're getting a one-on-one -on -one with a safety with your best wide receiver with all that space to throw into. Travis just has to get this out and make a good throw. And this is just a terrible throw. This is an example of that uh, arm not getting good extension, not working his way down the field. So you can see this. This is him pulling down and across. See that kind of slashing arm action? Instead of the arm going down the field this way, where you're where you want it, it's coming across and down. And that's going to cause the ball to sail on you. It's just what it does. Plus he's throwing off his back foot, which doesn't help. But this is all arm kind of chopping across. If he just throws this ball flatter towards the sideline, it's a big gain. And with Keon one-on-one -on -one there, there's a chance he makes that into a touchdown. I mean, you give him the one-on-ones in, in space, and you know he's shown he can make plays. All right, outside zone again. They ran a lot of it. Once again, this is just outstanding by Clemson's defense. And this is this is the place where it happens. So they're trying to get a little combo here on Tyler uh, Tyler Davis trying to get it to where buyers can get inside and, and get control and then work their way up to the backer. And Davis just beats buyers to the spot and works his way down. It's got a chance to hit if buyers can get that seal. It's a tough block, but he's got some help initially. Just got to move his feet a little better. Get in there uh, just a little bit more, a little bit more physical. And Clemson's just first to the spot. It's just a poor throw right there. Got a slot fade here, and he's beat. He's beat at the snap. I mean, he's beat right now, and Jordan's got to just... I think he's expecting that he's not going to get over the top, and he tries to throw this more like a back shoulder over in here. You got to put this over the top. Let him go get it. He's even, he's leaving. A little bit of a miscommunication. I, I would have wanted the other other throw. So counter. Now Clemson here found something in the late third quarter on counter. So they knew Florida State is going to spill this. And what ended up happening is the backers weren't fitting quite tight enough on the backside of that. So they were overrunning this from both spots. So the fill was getting a little bit too far over the top here, allowing then the backer is coming just a little bit too wide. So he's overrunning it a little bit here. So now you're able to log this and then you're able to kick this out. And then if the back is patient, he can hit that. And that's what they get. Now, other thing is that in quarters, you've got to have the plus one from your safety here. Safety's sitting on that. He's got to get moving now on this. And he just does not get downhill fast enough. The corner's in position to make this play here. But the safety's got to, safety's got to take a better angle. Even if he's not coming screaming down here because he's got to you know honor the potential of a play fake or something like that. He cannot hop outside there. He's got to. He's got to take his. He's got to play his angle, and he doesn't. You'll see it from the other side. And then it's just athleticism that keeps that from turning into a bigger play. But you'll see this. Just a little bit of extra space because the backer comes a little bit wide, and really the backer here. The way that Florida State's playing this. So you're gonna see this here. The way they're playing this, the edge is spilling this here, and then the new gap that is formed when the puller comes in is right here. The backer actually has to hit that gap. So edge is taking this gap, backer has to hit this gap. Now you've got to have the safety or the corner fill this gap. In quarters, it's almost always the safety that's going to be that guy. In cover two, you're usually going to have the corner. Now, sometimes in quarters, you can communicate and you can push this so that 
the the corner is going to come up and make that play on the outside as the contain. But you've got that's basically the way this is done. But the linebacker has to hit the inside shoulder of the puller. You cannot let him kick you out because of the way that this is set up. If you are going to let him kick, if you are going to play this where he's going to take the outside, then it's an automatic that the safety has to be the filler here. But you see him kind of pull out, and that's just that's really poor from from Knowles, and yet you still have Jared Verse. Look at that hand fighting, that dude. Man, he made money. All right, so. And then the game changes. Pretty straightforward here. They're going to give you a quarters look here, but they're not actually in quarters. They go straight man to the to the to the field. So he's going to take number two. He's in man straight up on number one. He's going to play deep safety, and your man to the your man to that side as well. Although they're switching out because of the uh, concept. And then they're dropping here. I think they're basically using Verse as a spy. I'm not a big fan of that, but then bring the Blitzer here. They're just trying to attract the eyes of the Blitz pickup here and get that freebie, and they get it. Great job by Deloach putting his helmet right through the ball, getting his hands back on it, and then you just got too many good athletes in space. And... Based on Joel Klatt's reasoning, Florida State is now a worse football team because they're going to have fewer yards in the game because they'll have one one less uh, possession, one fewer possession. Now, the way this works, you've got slide protection to this side. So essentially, they're going to pick up whichever three show. You're going to call. Mike calls right here. And the reason you call the mic is you know that that establishes which side is going to be your slide versus not. This is going to be your man side as a rule. So he's going to pick up end right there pretty much no matter what, unless you know something switches. But what you get is these guys both hit this. So now you see him push, and he's going to look to pick up whatever. Mafa, the back, is going to have a double read. He's going to look for any blitz from the inside. So if you're going to see this and this and this, you may expect that. Right? But he's got to he's got to start here, and then the rule is you're going to look for number two. You're going to work one to two on the man side. What Florida State does is kind of screw with this a little bit because the, because of the the stunt here, where you've got the slant here, and then the blitz here, he sees that happen and he sees the guard pick him up, and his eyes actually are going to come to here. See that right there? He's looking for the blitz. So he now he sees that blitz get picked up and he sees this he never gets his eyes to the to the will who's all the way out here partly because you just never expect somebody to blitz from that far and you got to give Deloach and Florida State credit for not telegraphing that that blitz was on the way really nicely done right through the sh right through the throwing arm that's textbook Let's go back and look at that again. All right, here we go. All right. Yeah, now explaining that same thing. All right. Now, once again, end of the third quarter, they found something with this counter. You can see fitting it in tight. They're able to log this, pushing them inside. The backer is going to take the outside shoulder here. So I think that's I think they're actually fitting this that way right now where the backer is taking the outside and then safety is supposed to be here. But Knowles is even stumbling up into there. That's just it's not great. And then that's a good run from the back side, but you can see they're just able to get the turn there. You can't let yourself get turned as the spiller so easily. You want to hit this pretty close to square, which is what Clemson was able to do. Hit him on that shoulder, but don't let him turn you. And then this one, depending on your technique, you can either 
play that to the outside or play it to the inside. They corrected this at the quarter. And here, once again, this is why I'm I'm adamant that they should play more inside leverage. Look, your your corners are holding up on these over and over again. Start just playing more true. Start playing more true man. Get a little more pressure like you did in this second half. Now here, this is the fourth quarter. It was convenient that they started struggling with counter at the end of the third quarter because they corrected it in the fourth quarter. They corrected it between the quarters. And you can see what they did here. Spiller, first of all, takes this on more square. So that's good. He doesn't let himself get turned quite as much. And then secondly, watch the watch the the backer here. This is Omar Graham. Watch him here. He hits this much harder and hits it on the inside shoulder of the tackle. And by doing that, that eliminates that seam that had been there. And now what they're doing is they're doing a little swap here. As he comes in to block the the safety, he turns him over, and then a nice violent tackle from a from a corner. Not, Green's made himself some money. He's going to get himself drafted. Guys who can tackle like this on the edge and cover, uh, that's, that's valuable in the NFL. Physicality is going to go a long way. So now it's third and 12. And you might think I'd be upset about the outside leverage here, but I'm actually okay with it on third and 12 because your normal depth here of catch or so on a, on a quick slant is going to be about eight, nine yards. And what they're doing here is they're going to play this for him to, uh, they're they're doing this for him to be able to break on any short drop. Notice he's playing this without any backpedal. That's great. Just keep your feet right there and drive. And he drives on it, plays physical, five yards short of the first down. That's good defense. I'm I'm really good with that. That's that's how that's supposed to be done. All right, so you get the punt. Nice job making the catch. Just catch him. That's all I ask. So at this point, they're just trying to get Travis out, out of the pocket a little bit and just force Clemson to be honest on the edge a little bit. And this is where, again, Carter is just so good and so fast. And that's a tough throw on the run. I'm not really a big fan of of that particular throw, but this is nice here. You got a little uh got a little layered concept here. You're gonna sort of a version of a of a snag, but it's inverted. So what you're gonna have is you're gonna have kind of a uh an out here at the top. Come on. You're gonna have an out at the at the top. You're gonna have a little sit down here, and then this flat route. And the flat is a hot immediately against the blitz. They bring the blitz. Nice little throw. This is something they work on every day in practice. I'd like to see him do this without the back feet and then fading into the end zone type thing, but still a good throw. And for once, they actually get a step on a on a backer who can't quite keep up. Trotter's not quite as good an athlete as Carter. And you get your athlete out in space. Nicely done. Benson's made himself a little bit of money with showing his hands this year. So this is nice here. They're trying to... This is a similar kind of concept to what they what Clemson tried, but without the screen concept. They're trying to get the overflow this way. Everything's coming this way. And they're trying to get the throwback with the waggle action... They're trying to get the throw back to the tight end, get him matched up against somebody who can't run with him. Unfortunately, Clemson has Barrett Carter. And this is this is probably, this might be a touchdown against 126 of the teams in the country. But, you know, you got maybe LSU with Perkins and Clemson with Carter. And I'm not sure there's anybody else who uh, has a backer that is going to make that play. So here's counter. Man, they just really just blow this up. Uh, 
actually pull in the center there. And they do a great job of boxing this from the end. And then as they once they once they've boxed that from the end, if you watch here, Byers has to get this turned inside. And that young defensive tackle, that freshman, just out physicals him, just punches him back and gets in there, makes the play. And just getting pushed around a little bit up front there. Don't like this at all. I think they're running, yeah, they're running a version of mesh here. And the way FSU runs mesh, your first read is the rail. And then you're working across to the to the mesh. But Clemson just gets a jailbreak here. So he's just trying to get it out and throws it to one of the meshers. It's a dangerous throw, but Johnny makes the catch. Not really a fan of that. Take that. Nice field position. Note here, they have moved away from the outside leverage here. They're forcing him to squirt release. Squirt release is where you force him to start outside and then work back across your face. And he does a great job of maintaining that leverage the whole way. And that just changes the, the whole thing, the whole dynamic for the quarterback. It's not an easy throw anymore. Not an easy pitch and catch. It's fine there. This was a nice, nice design by Clemson. They know that in this, in this look, they're going to get a one-on-one -on -one here. So, essentially, as long as these guys stay out, you're not going to be able to pass this off very much. So you basically have to either bump, and he's going to have to be the guy that's going to take the back and the edge. But once you got the play action, they're already sort of working there. Then you got the this little screen action it's a little a little fuzzy for the backers to read he really should be bumping out and passing this off but it, it's just so muddy and then this turns into a little slip screen it's a nice design tip your cap you got to make it you got to make a better play don't let him hurdle you kevin Knowles. right through the midsection Okay, give Knowles credit here. He, he gets into the backfield and is in on the tackle. Although, again, the guy to make this play primarily is going to be uh, Lundy. All right. So this is a case of, again, bringing that buck pressure. Lucky that that was poorly thrown because DB falls down, but pressure solves a lot of problems. It's why you start bringing it. It's why you don't sit back. This should have been called uh, pass interference on two different guys. So this is this is a straight up block, and there's no effort to run a route here either. And yet, didn't matter. FSU handles it. Gets off the field. This is, a, this is an attempt at a trick play. So they punt it to the left, and Florida State has a misdirection call on. So John, so Keon is going here, signaling that he's about to, you know, he's he, he's trying to draw the entire coverage team there. And you're going to get the leaker here. He's, he's going to where the ball's been kicked the whole way. And if this ball lands where you normally expect it to, which is right around here, he's able to go ahead and, you know, right around here, he's able to go ahead and pick that up and there's nobody in sight. They're starting to block back. Punter just out punts it and punts it so close to the sideline and so deep that there's no shot. So it's tough. It's a good, good concept. Just got too good of a kick to, to do it against. So once again, they're just trying to get Jordan on the, on the outside with his legs I think this is a bad decision. I think he's got to keep this ball and take the take the profit 
get up here, get out of bounds before you get contact if need be. But this is a tough throw. And I'm not I'm not a big fan of asking for that throw in that circumstance. Especially on that corner. You're just not getting a lot. Now's when they start going after number ten. Good bit. Nice job there. I mean he's in position, it's just a poor throw. Let's see what they got. So you got verts to the field. Really second and 10 here. I mean, if you want to be more conservative, you take the curl flat to the to the uh, sticks and you probably get the first down here. It's open. But thing is, you know, based on scouting report, you get a one-on-one -on -one with that. There's no deep safety. You're going to take that. And I have, you know, people have been criticizing Jordan Travis for not handling, for not taking the underneath stuff as much. I'm not going to rip him for taking that matchup. If I see that matchup in second and 10 and they're giving me that with no safety, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm probably, I'm probably going to that 95 times out of a hundred. Just got to put a better ball out there. Once again, you can see the footwork. Here's the problem. I don't even know what he's doing. He should be setting to where that foot drops to there, that foot drops to there, and then the next steps are right there and there, and his shoulders stay square, and he's not hes not doing that at all. He's just turning open immediately. He's just afraid of the speed. And this right here, you're already beat. That foot should be there. That foot should be about there. And he's just, yeah, that's an obvious hold. I wouldn't have taken that penalty if I was Clemson, by the way. Okay, so on this one, you've got a flat, you've got a post, and you've got a wheel, right? And then there's a climb coming from this side. A climb is a uh, deep cross-country, is a cross-country route, an over route. And then you got another out here. So just leaking. So three-man rush. And with this structure, he's just going to play deeper than the deepest. So he's going to cap the the uh, post. This is a deep post. And looks to me like Jordan is waiting on that because this is dead. This is capped right now by the, uh, by the corner plan over the top. So this is going to turn into... It would be a deep post over the top if you don't have a middle of the field closed. Middle of the field closed is going to kind of work across. Looks to me like Jordan's waiting on that. He needs to understand that against this coverage look, that's a bad idea no matter what because with the climb coming across, this safety starts to work back. So if you get this and you try to fit this ball in, if he'd let this go, even if he's in front of the safety here and this is bending... This is a really dangerous play because you're going to get undercut by that safety, and that's that's how you get a lot of backside interceptions. The place to go is right here. As the as the backer has to work towards the flat, you will hit the first the so-called first window on the over route right now, and you sh that that ball should be out right now, and you take care of that. Now Byers gets run by again here. He's really struggling at this stage. But that's both on Travis and on Byers. So if you look at this, Byers just gets himself in a bad position. He's got inside help. That's the thing. You've got to understand, it's a three-man rush. Your job is to set extra wide and to work him to your guard. But he falls for the inside move you just cannot do that. You've got help inside. You got to be right here, stay square, force him here, and then your quarterback can sit as long as he wants at that point. Great job by Bless Harris at the top, by the way. You see what he's waiting for. He's waiting for this to clear. 
The problem is if that clears and he goes to throw it, that's going to come up underneath and that's going to rob it. So the place to go is throw Johnny open right here. Your first down is right here. You put the ball on, on a 240-pound wide receiver right here, and he's probably going to get that first down. Take the easy money right there. There's plenty of time. Even though your tackle got beat, there's plenty of time. Take this one. This right here is fool's gold. There's, there's a guy over top. You're waiting too long. This is capped here, and he's, he's going to rob underneath it. This right here is gold. Take that. That's on Jordan. We're not interested in Colorado. Could have gotten him on a hold here. This is Bethune is beat. Kind of pulled him, tugged him. Once again, they're trying to get this easy access bit. Nice job by Green, but big receiver. End up second and two. There's a little bit of confusion here because you've got two on this side and then Greedy Vance has to be on this side and Clemson's going fast. This is where they're trying to get this ball out here because it's a one-on-two at this point. And this is just an inside zone, but it's got an automatic RPO if you have numbers to the outside. What you tell your quarterback is if you've got the back to your throwing side, you have to work. you have to make sure that your footwork that you kind of skip to the outside with your footwork. You get your depth into the outside, skip away if you're not going to play action this because that elbow is going to come up and it's going to hit your throwing hand, which is exactly what happens here. And he just does not skip those feet out. FSU gets lucky here. Just have to create enough space that you're not going to get yourself hit by your own back. And you're doing that as the ball's coming. Nicely timed buck blitz here. And that, this is good coverage. I'm sorry. This is not, this is not a, uh, this is not interference in my view. And that's a late call for one, but he slipped. If you look at this, I love the inside leverage. Just go true man. Receiver just slips and he's got his hand on the back of the, of the, of the DB or of the DB of the corner of green here trying to push off and just loses his footing. You see him, see him just sort of slide out there. That's holding your leverage. That's good coverage to me, but you know, I'm not the one that made the call. <laughs>